Uh, hi, everyone. Um, welcome to our session of Control M Presents this week on companion parts. Um, my name is Danielle Gaius, and I um, am a Plex accredited implementation specialist for Control M. Um, so today we will be recording this session and I'd like to ask that you please keep yourselves on mute for the duration of the presentation. We will have time at the end of our session for some questions. Um, so I put together uh, this presentation for you guys today as an introduction of sorts to companion parts and to show you how the companion parts work within the Plex system. Uh, Control M will continue to do sessions like this weekly, so if you like what you see, uh, we can add you to our mailing list if you're not already there. Uh, please reach out to Jill on our team if you want to be added. Um, and also feel free to share um, the news about Control M Presents with anybody um, within your company or other Plex users that you know. This is not limited to just Control M clients. It's actually for anybody who utilizes Plex. So feel free to invite uh, anyone out there who, who you might think, who you think might be interested. Um, later on today, we will be posting this video recording to our YouTube channel. So you'll have a point of reference later if you'd like to refer back to this presentation, along with all the other uh, past Control and Present presentations that we've had in the past couple of months. Those are all on our YouTube channel as well. So today to review, um, we will start with a discussion on what companion parts are and how they differ from multi-outs and when they should be used. Uh, we'll review the configuration and setup of companion parts within Plex. And then I'll show you how to use uh, companion parts at the control panel. From there, we'll discuss companion part inventory, the effects on scheduling with companion parts, and we'll talk a little bit about costing impacts as well. And then we'll have the floor open up for some questions too. So what are companion parts? Uh, when we talk about companion parts in Plex, it's essentially a way for you to track uh, what would be quote unquote scrap that is generated during the production process. Um, or it's a way to generate um, a different part or component um, that is produced when a parent part is made. Companion parts are often used by companies who create a byproduct as part of a typical operation, and then they recycle that byproduct to be used again in the production process. So companion parts would be of good use for customers who have plastic or some sort of a foam regrind management system within their production process. So let's think of it this way. Um, in our example today, we're going to produce a tote bag. And that tote bag requires us to cut out fabric into different shapes to sew together to create that tote. And as we cut that fabric, uh, we might have some extra fabric that we can't use for the tote bag. And instead of throwing all that extra fabric away as scrap, we can recycle that and make it a different and smaller part in a different production process. The setup for that extra fabric in Plex is very similar to a multi-out setup. And if you look at the graphics here real quick, you'll see here for a multi-out, you have your parent part, which then produces your multiple uh, multi-out parts. So you have multi-part out one, part two, part three, et cetera. For a companion part setup, it's just like a standard production within Plex where you're producing one part. And alongside that production of that one part, you also have your companion part. There's a, also, uh, there, there's a big difference between companion parts and multi-outs in the system, and perhaps the biggest one is that multi-outs are typically only used at the first uh, operation within your production process. Um, and companion parts can be used at any operation. It does not have to be just at that first operation on your process routing. So let's talk a little bit about the configuration of the companion part. Um, in order for the companion parts to work properly, they have to have their own part record within Plex, along with an operation on the process routing. And those operations are generally set to a receiving operation. And we use those receiving operations so that the companion parts can show up on the MRP. So we can see here uh, in this example, we have our parent part, which is that tote bag. And from that parent part, we have a bomb component of fabric. And between these two here, they're going to create this companion part here of an excess fabric part. 
So now that the parts are created and set, we have to make some sort of connection within Plex between our parent part and our companion part. And this is done within the multi-out screen. So with some additional setting configurations, which I will discuss on the next couple of slides here, uh, you can get a new button to display on your multi-out screen called Add Companion Part. And when we go and add a companion part, you're going to see a screen similar to this. And within this screen here, you're going to define your parent part, and you're also going to define your companion part. And this is what makes that connection there between the two. So we have a part of a tote bag, and at our operation for our tote bag called cut shape, we're going to produce also this out part of excess fabric. And that excess fabric is going to go immediately into a receive operation on the process routing for that companion part. Additionally, within your companion part setup screen, you're going to set a companion part quantity. So in this example here, for every tote bag that I cut out at my cut operation, I'm going to have an excess amount of a half a foot of fabric. And this half a foot of fabric is going to go, or is going to be moved into inventory as well as we complete this operation for our, our parent part, our tote bag. Some additional setup details as well. There is a setup table called multi-out mode, and that allows you to define your companion part. So on that setup table, you're going to want to create an entry called companion or companion part or something like that. And I'll show you what that looks like within the Plex system as well. So some additional information about the configuration within Plex. Again, you have to create a part record for your companion part with a process routing step. You'll have to enable that setup table called multi-out mode. And for the companion parts to work at the control panel, you have to take a look at these four settings that are displayed here on the screen. Um, making sure that these first three settings here are turned on and make sure that the setting here is turned off. And also note, uh, when you are creating companion parts at the control panel, the companion parts will not show on the history for that particular job. So now what I like to do is move over into Plex and we'll, I'll show you what the companion parts look like. We'll go through the, set, the setup real quick of that. And then we'll show you what that looks like on the control panel itself. So within our uh, Control M PCN right here, I'm in the part screen, and you can see here that we have our companion part um, part numbers here. Again, we have the tote bag, we have the fabric, which is our bomb component, and we have the excess fabric. I'm just going to go into the tote bag real quick to show you what that process routing looks like. We have three steps here. We have a cut, a sew, and a pack, and we have our bomb item of fabric. Our multi-out part or our companion part will also display here on the process routing for your parent part. So if I move along here, I'm gonna go over to the multi-out screen. And as you can see here, I do have a companion part showing. And it shows in blue so I can easily identify my companion parts from my multi-out parts. Um, this again is all based off of the setup table that I talked about earlier called the multi-out setup. Uh, there is a color block where you can select a color for your companion parts to display on the screen so you can easily call out those companion parts. So if I was going to add a brand new companion part, um, I would simply press the add companion part, part button up here in the action bar. Um, we'll just take a quick look at this one that's already been created. Again, this is where you store all of your information about that companion part. So now that I have my connection between my parent part and my companion part, I'm ready to use these at the control panel. I have already created um, a job for my companion part and my parent part here. So I'm gonna create 20 pieces of this tote bag part. And again, here you can see the process routing down here. And when I head over to the control panel, 
there's no tricks or anything when it comes to actually loading this particular parent part to the control panel itself. There's nothing fancy that has to be done when using companion parts or anything like that. You simply select your work center, you select your job, and you log in. So I'm going to log in here real quick and update my work center status. And now when I go over into the production screen itself, you will notice a difference here. So now I also, in, in addition to my typical uh, production screen, I have a box here for our companion parts. And what this is going to do is as I create this tote bag here at this first operation, for every one piece of the tote bag that I create, I'm also going to create a half a foot of fabric for my companion part. And the numbers here will increment as I increase the amount of parts that I'm producing. So what I'll do here, as you can see, I already have my source material loaded. I'm just gonna start a new container and I'll produce one piece of this tote bag at my uh, cut operation. So you'll see here, I've recorded one piece of my tote bag and I've also recorded some of my excess fabric companion part. Within this companion part screen here, if I see that my container for my, contain for my companion parts is getting full, I can, well, I used to be able to, uh, you can uh, click this container full button here and you can um, create that inventory container. That will move off into your inventory and you can start a brand new companion part container at the control panel. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna complete my production of my 20 pieces. I'm gonna say my container is full and update. And then I think I might be missing a setting here real quick, but um, what I should be able to do here is say that my container and my companion parts is full as well. And then this container will move over into my inventory. So if I take a look at inventory, and I look at my companion part itself, you're going to see here that I have this container of my companion part that's been created and added into inventory. So again, this calculation for my quantity is coming off of the amount that I added um, at my multi-out level. So again, for every 20 of those tote bags that I produced, um, I'm creating half of that for my companion part. So we have 10 feet of fabric here. Also, you'll see that it's gone right into that receive operation. And again, this is for MRP purposes. That's why it's going into a receive operation. So let's say, for example, um, now that I have uh, 10 feet of this excess fabric companion part, Maybe I want to use that to create a different part altogether. So for example, on my parts list, um, maybe I want to create a wallet that matches that tote bag. So I have my wallet part here. And if I went over into MRP and I add a job for that wallet part, and let's see. Since our excess fabric is part of the bomb for that wallet, you're going to see demand for this fabric here over in MRP. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back over to our presentation. And we're going to talk real quick about costing. So I am not a costing expert by any means, but I met with our, our team internally last night and here's what they told me about costing and companion parts. There aren't really any actual cost records associated or thrown for the companion part since we didn't purchase it. There's no material cost unlike with multi-outs and none of the labor and overhead actual costs are posted to the companion part container either. With standard costing, you can choose to value the excess part at zero, 
And if you do choose to do that, you don't have to do anything. But if you want to value this in inventory, you'll want to add a manual cost record. And typically we see people use material material. Uh, you could create a new cost type if you wanted to, and then go over to the cost accounts and set up determined accounts for the posting type of companion part. We would typically see a debit to inventory and a credit to scrap. And a warning, if you decide to create a new part type for this companion part, make sure that you include, uh, or make sure that include in standard is checked on that, on that part type. And if you forget, you will not have a cost structure or SCAR entries at all. We ran into that issue a little bit last night, so lessons learned there. Um, and if you want to talk a little bit more about costing in terms of companion parts, feel free to email Patty or Zach on our Control M team. So at this point, um, I would like to open the floor up for questions about companion parts. Danielle, I'm not sure if you saw, but you have two in the um, oh. two in the chat, and I just okay. want to let you know that I did. I'm going to have to bug out pretty quick, but I did set up um, a companion part for uh, the breakfast breakfast revision ZF part. So the question is: Is it possible to have multiple companion parts created in an operation? I set up the part, the parent part breakfast ZF. Um, and it let me set up multiple pair parts. Uh, Heidi, we did not test that yet, but if you want, we can test it and get back out to you uh, on that. And Danielle, if you're, are you able to see the chat? You can see the second yep. question. So the okay. second question is from Daisy and she's asking, can the quantity be edited on the companion part? For example, we can say that we create 200 pounds per product per container, but we weigh up, weigh, we weighed up the container and it's 250 pounds. Can the quantity be updated to correct the quantity at the control panel? Um, so I what you would have to do is probably do an inventory adjustment at the container level um, after the fact for that companion part. Any other questions out there? So I'm just going back to Heidi's question here. Heidi, as you can see here, Patty has added multiple multi-out or companion parts here for this part number. Uh, we would again have to test this out at the control panel to see how that would react, but uh, we can at least get those companion parts at the process routing. And we'll follow up with you on, on whether or not we can do that at the control panel as well. Perfect, thank you, I appreciate that. Yep. Um, I'm going to hand this over to Patty to discuss our next Control M Presents presentation. Great. Thanks, Danielle. Appreciate it. Good job today. Um, next week, we're going to talk about a construct that was built back in 2008 but not a lot of folks know about. It's called Negative Bombs. And the great way to think about this is imagine if you are making a washer that is the size of a record album that has, you know, what, um, 10 inch. OD and maybe a nine inch ID. So you've got a big piece of metal in the middle. Um, the construct allows you to cost to account for that big chunk that you're actually getting scrap credit for. So for example, if that big washer used $10 of the material, but you were really getting a $4 scrap credit, you would want your cost model to account for that $4 scrap credit. So I'm gonna go through um, how it works, why you should use it, um, how it behaves in SCAR and uh, how to offset your scrap account. So please share this with your cost accountants and uh, hopefully they'll find it useful. So thank you. Back to you, Danielle. Good job today. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Patty. Um, if there's no other questions, um, I think we're, we're pretty much done here for today. But if you guys come up with something later on, you can always email me at danielle at controlm.solutions. And thanks, everyone, for your time today.